Welcome to the Tales of New Dunhaven. This week we have the Cackling Crows crew, starring Oblivious. Yo. Sonny. Servus. Strong Copper. Hello. And Creeper Zone. I hate going last because everyone else takes what I want to say first. <laughs> <laughs> and previously in New Dunhaven. The last time the Cackling Crows went to work, it was for a family boss that wanted to rob the small bank of a former money man. Though it was not the most quiet of getaways, the crew made a great impression on the family with their thorough work, and they even made an acquaintance in Linus, a master thief of the Mummers. Elsewhere in the city, there are murmurings that the Church of the Silver Judge is in a tizzy for some reason. For now, though, the Cackling Crows have decided to take on another job from the Leverage Broker. Uh, so, how this one starts is you're not actually invited up to the, uh, leverage, you know, like, office tower thing. Uh, you are actually given instructions to head to a, uh, a crime scene, actually. Uh, uh. uh... Yes? That's not strange at all. <laughs> uh, you're you're speak you're for yourself. Asked to They're go. Usually not cold. I'm sorry. So you're you're asked to, to go to a uh, a location uh, in a merchant district, which has been closed off by uh, by the city watch and a few priests of the church, actually. Uh, but, uh, your instructions also include a way to get into the building, uh, without anyone, uh, through a gap in the, uh, the surveillance. And you're able to get inside this building, which, uh, you're not sure what it was before, but right now it is a decrepit and decaying, like, open floor pan building. Uh, where the wood is rotting and the, the glass is crumbling and uh, you can't even tell what this was anymore, which kind of belies what it looked like outside. And even in this place, just there is a feeling in the air of just pure decay. Of just, just you feel like you're, you're rotting and your equipment is rusting just, just a little bit by being here. And inside this building, there's no other city watchman inside, for whatever reason. But inside you find a uh, a uh, chalk outline, sort of in the center of the room. <coughs> and you uh, see Diane, the leverage broker, and another woman, kind of this uh, burly butch woman, uh, kneeling next to the outline near Diane. And Diane looks up at uh, the four of you as you approach and says, Ah, so you've taken on this job then. How bold of you. Get four body bags ready just in case. <laughs> what do you mean four? Things get that hot, I'm out of there. And as, as she says, the Viola also slightly rubs her shoulders with this strange feeling. Rot, rust. I wasn't being serious. <laughs> no one can always leave things to represent itself as a wonderful chance to earn some silver d on the scales of the silver judge. One cannot pass it up. Well, whatever your reasons, we'll take them. The other woman gets up uh, and kind of scans all of you and glaring, says, ah, I guess we'll make this work. I'm Samantha Knightley. I'm a bounty hunter. I've been on uh, this guy's trail for a while, and well, I figured I'm not, I don't really work with the right kind of people that much, but I hear that they can find just about anything you need. And I need this man. Dead or alive. Preferably yeah, alive, I so I can collect the bounty. And split it oh. with you guys, of course. Uh, so, who, what are we looking? Uh, who or what are we looking for? 
Diane pulls out a little like notepad <laughs> and flips through it, saying, "This is uh, the his newspaper name is the Grim Specter. Uh, former name Jack. Don't know his last name." And he is one of New Dunhaven's most wanted for the high crime of heretical necromancy. You Is there any other kind? Oh, there's, I mean, she looks over at uh, Jackram and says, You may or may not be aware of the pallbearer specialty in your cartel. I am. I am. I don't. We. Don't, I haven't interacted with one with one of them personally, though. So, the cartels. You know, it's not common, but not really forbidden that the cartels practice some heresy. Every cartel seems to have their own specialty. Mm. So, from what I've heard, I wouldn't so much call what. what I wouldn't set to the degree call what my cartel does necromancy, per se. At least not in the general idea of the people would think of it. Oh, uh, I would actually agree, because what uh, the Grim Spectre does here is... Well, she gestures around the room and then at the chalk outline. The body here, one uh, Adam, Adam Stark, uh, was not... <laughs> was not found with uh, much of anything that was not his bones. As if he had rotted on the spot, even though he had been just fine days before. Mm. Adam Stark was simply another merchant uh, specialized in, uh, you know, antiques and glassware and that sort of thing. Was he the Grim Spectre's first victim? Or... No, this, Sorry, I this haven't would really be, This would be uh, number four. Hmm. Probably should have been paying a bit or rather, more attention rather this to these be, uh, This would be Incident 4. Some of them have involved and actually, this would be the fourth death, but plenty of other incidents about uh, the wrong kind of people coming back from the dead and then causing havoc and a panic. But this would be the fourth murder. So Anyone? wait, they've been coming back? I doubt this one will be. But... Uh, Necromancers don't just specialize in the raising of dead. They also, particularly as skilled ones like Jack, they can command the force of death and decay and entropy itself. Mm. And particularly powerful sorcery leaves a scar on the land, as you can kind of feel here. Mm. So yes, this is your target. Is is there any, you know, connection or pattern between the deaths, or is he just some rapid dog that's... Well, that's, that's kind of why I called you here. Because until now, there hasn't been a terribly strong connection between any of the incidents. But here... The decay has wiped away a lot of the evidence, but she walks over towards one of the walls and sort of rubs away some some dirt and grime off of the wooden walls, the wallpaper peeled away, and uh, uncovers sort of a, a faded runic glyph of some kind. And Diane says... I have seen something like this symbol before. Another one of my crews. Uh, it was, it was a job involving a birthday party, if you'll believe that. But there was involvement with the cult of Thousand Eyes, and 
a ritualistic kidnapping and sacrifice. Note to self, remember to watch the birthday job because I forgot about that. <laughs> yes, indeed. Crossovers. They're, they're happening now. Uh, hmm. I mean, uh, also, also, while she's talking, I'm going to I'm going to take, uh, yeah, I've got sorceress knowledge, so I'm going to take a look while she's talking. Ah, yes. You would actually know better than her. Uh, you take a look at these things and uh, the faded symbols. You find more and more of them now that you know what you're looking for. And they are scattered on, on the floor, on the walls, if you want a ceiling. Like, this was a place for some, this was a ritual killing, whatever this was. This uh, so, this man so dying here, dying at this time, in this way, had a ritual significance. Something based on the movement of the stars. Oh, that's that's not good. He, he which so like, he, he, which likely means that this is in service of of some much larger ritual. So after being deeply disturbed by that, um, he he starts uh you know, mo uh, moving around the room and just like, you know, just trying to, trying to outline basically as, as much of whatever the ritual circle is left to kind of, to kind of get idea, uh, to get an idea of, you know, anything else he can learn and to kind of, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh give greater perspective to the, the layman as it were. Ah, damn, I sprayed soil all over me. Um, <laughs> is, is, is lies also, uh, eating lunch while this is happening. <laughs> no, no, I, I was trying. I was trying to move a packet of soy uh, from that was sitting on my desk. I was like, What's this doing here? And it apparently was half full, and I sprayed it all over my shirt. Ah, uh, dang! You need to go uh, clean that uh, up, or no, no, no. I'm, I'm good. This thing needs to be washed anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so... I'm sorry. I just couldn't imagine that. The, I, I couldn't help but imagine that uh, as uh, Lazarev is is walking around the room, very seriously looking at these, these. Uh, you know, magical, deathly inscribings that he just reaches out to to examine one of them and just like sprays himself with a pack of soy. <laughs> that that should probably be the first thing I animate if I ever get some artistic skill. I'm working on that right now, but that's somewhat unrelated. Um, but yeah, so basically, he he's he's going around the room, hallway, uh, whatever, and just scratching away all the all the dirt and grime he can to kind of un uncover as many as he can find. It's like, huh, well, this is definitely disturbing. So Diane kind of follows you as you examine things and says, so chances are, then, that the Grim Spectre, or Jack, or whatever, is working with the Cult of a Thousand Eyes, whether on a permanent basis or as a hire. Not sure. We know that one of my other crews have foiled one of their rituals, but apparently it's still ongoing. And Great. your target, and your target oh. is, is filling out their orders. Hmm. So part of the reason you want him alive is so that we can figure out just what the hell is going on in the grander scheme of things. Yeah, that would that would help a great deal, but. And then uh, Samantha Knightley, the the you know burly bounty hunter, walks up and she says, "Yeah, but getting paid would be also really nice, as far as I'm concerned." Mm -hmm. Uh, just out of curiosity, what what area of the city did you say this was? This is a merchant district. Okay, just getting some context. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Diane says there was a dredger. Who ended up handling that cultist back in the commoner district? I could point you in his direction, see if yeah, see if he knows anything more. But that would also mean dealing with a dredger. Hmm. True. True. Yeah. It. Uh. At last, just shakes his head. Is like, ah, uh, this is this is a bigger problem. Uh, Laz, is it, is it, it's Laz is the short one, right? Yeah, L-A-Z, yes. Okay. Laz, you, a after examining the entirety of the room as much as you can, you come across a, uh, startling realization. Uh, 
that the celestial significance of this there there are symbols that sort of mark the time relative to an alignment of sorts uh-huh. a, a, a very uh very significant alignment of stars and planets and whatnot that's going down and that is happening that alignment which is when you'd want to sort of reach the climax of this long-term ritual is in two days based on what you know of you know celestial aligned sorcery and uh upon upon that uh, he he basically <laughs> he basically exclaims in 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 Vladic, oh fuck me <laughs> <laughs> that bad I I don't know. Would would anyone even understand what I just said? Because no, I, but you. But I'm pretty sure Viola would recognize you cursing loudly in your native tongue, even if she didn't know what you cur- what you really said. We've heard you do, heard you do enough times with these two idiots before. <laughs> okay, fa- actually, fair enough. Okay. <laughs> he, he's the 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 equivalent of of Samuel Jackson in in uh um. Jurassic Park, just hold on to your butts when this is about to go wrong. Um, after probably composing himself, uh, he, he explains like, "Yeah, whatever, whatever he's doing, it's it's going to culminate in two days, so we don't have a whole lot of time." Yes, yeah, oh, great. Great. a necro- Sorry, considering I mean, you go, you go. Uh, at that. Whereas, you know, some of the rest of you kind of despair at that, the, your, the client, Samantha, her eyes brighten up and says, that means if we figure out where they're going to strike for this final ritual, we can catch them there and then. And then she you looks know, around at the rest of you going, what? You know, considering that this guy is a necromancer with the whole entropy thing, I'm fairly certain this ritual is not going to be sold in world hunger. Or, I mean, I mean you know, to, to be fair, what she's saying has merit, but... Yeah, but I don't want to crush a crazy old ritual sacrifice thing or whatever they're doing. Pro- probably probably our best bet to, you know, not do this up to the last minute. You know, I've, I've, I've played, uh, I played Majora's Mask. I've seen what happens when I put off stuff. <laughs> It's just more, it's kind of the balance though. The, lo- the closer to the deadline we do this, the more cults it's probably going to be there. That'd be an interesting idea for a Dusty Outlaws campaign. It's just you play the same three days, but like infinitely, you know, just over and over again with the time reversal thing. Smud <laughs> takes notes. I don't know, that'd be an interesting idea. Weird do. Yeah, a, a very, a very well. I think in order, uh, you know, side note, in order for that to work, I think it would probably be best to not let them know that that's the premise of the job. Just, just outline the job normally, and then at the end of three days, that's when things tick over. Yeah, I, I, I think, uh, I think you'd want to let the the players know up front that that was going to be like the core premise, just so they're not like they don't, you know, they know what they're getting into in terms of like repeating content. Uh, but that that is something later on down the line. Uh, and and I'm th- and I'm thinking like it wouldn't be just like one or two or three sessions, but like a kind of a mini campaign. Uh, that 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 could be like the finale or something where like multiple crews are involved across several different things. So we're on day fifty-seven, which is actually day three, but <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We're drifting a bit off topic here. Yeah, the curves have slotted the obsidian coin repeatedly. Uh, I'm, right. I'm already, I'm already liking this and wanting to be a part of. It. Uh. <laughs> All right, back to the, back to the premise, back to the, back to what we're doing. Yeah, sir. Sooner to, sooner to the, sooner to the deadline, go more cultists we can capture. Although the flip side of that is sooner to the deadline, the more pressed we are, and probably the more, the more chance that everything that. Considering what we're up against, everything dies. The the cult seems to be obsessed with calamity, so assume that 
something very bad will happen if we don't foil this ritual. Mm. Right. Also, the the other thing I'm concerned with is is even if they fail here, they'll probably try again. So probably any any future knowledge we can come up with to to keep this from happening we couldn't hurt. So as part of Viola steps a bit to the side and begins mumbling how she didn't become a criminal to help to save people instead of <laughs> just stealing stuff. That's Krenna's so still, you Krenna's can't still, still trying to comprehend the idea of someone being able to bring someone back from the dead. That's that's still trying. <laughs> He's still still mind blown on that. <laughs> it's like, wait, you can come back from the dead. Wait, you can well, kill someone. No. What? Well, they're not so much coming back from the dead as well. Basically, your corpse just gets up and does things. Usually Assassin horrific or, things. Assassin for hire will kill uh, before and after death. <laughs> uh, isn't that pretty much the premises of most of the of the grave diggers in the first place? They have to basically go, go back and make sure the stuff doesn't come back from the, from the dead. <laughs> I may have done. The, I may the, have the, the grave diggers just control the things. the funeral economy. And, and the grave keeper, so let's just say that certain things have happened and leave it at that. Ne- never mix anything what alchemists can get. Ne- never mix in- embalming fluid with X and blur. It leads to a very, very stressful night. Yikes. No. <laughs> no. Jeez. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> I didn't say drink it. <laughs> <laughs> let's just say the embalmers sometimes like to get to have interesting ideas and leave it at that anyway so uh, right now it is uh, let's see I'm going to say it's going to be on uh, the, way, the, mo- the way this makes sense is if the last time segment is a day segment so uh right now it's sort of like uh afternoon evening ish so your first time segment will be a night and then day then night then day and that'll be and on that that last day will be you know go time sounds about right right yeah yeah uh also uh diane as you're uh, preparing to start planning. She takes you all aside. Not that there's much of an aside, but she, she takes you away from Samantha to talk to you for a second. And she says, mm-hmm. Now, I need to make something very, very clear about this. Uh, about things that have been going on with leverage. And... On this job, I need you to make absolutely certain that you do not cross the church. Out of curiosity, since Jackram is a grave digger and they have knowledge of the church, and he actually lives in the back room of one, just does he have an idea of just what's actually going on with with the church as a whole, or what's happening with that? Things you know about the church. Yes, you do. You're not, I I guess, I don't know if you'd be intimately familiar with sort of the, the dark, you know, black ops side of the church, for lack of a better word, but, uh, you might, I think in, in regards to like rumor and whatnot, wow, I'm belaboring the hell out of this, mostly trying to, trying to figure out what you would know and how you'd know it. Mm. T- take your but time, ba- we're not going anywhere. But basically, uh, one of the church's operatives was found uh, dead in the canal without any of his clothes, and the church is very unhappy about that. And uh, rumblings among the right kind of people suggest that uh, the blame is falling at the feet of Leverage and Diane. <laughs> oh. <laughs> because of something another crew did. You so not our problem. Well, Diane's here saying, 
Th- this th- Dang's here to say this is your problem because I mean, yeah, but, not directly, but it still affects us. I mean, not our fault. Yeah, it's not our fault. But if That's she, but if Diane dies, we don't get paid. I always think things practical. Well, you don't really get paid by default on a leverage job anyway. Well, we don't. Diane goes. Right. Diane disappears some time in the night, and we know we're going to get jobs from her. Yeah, t- t- typically, what want to avoid losing people giving us jobs. So, so yes, you you know what Diane's talking about in terms of hey, don't piss off the church any more than we kind of already have. Julie noted. All right. Yeah, La- Laz wouldn't know anything. He's Jewish. <laughs> 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 okay. I'm not sure. All right. Anyway, uh, or whatever the du- new Dunhaven equivalent is. You would think that the Dunhaven equivalent of the Jews would would appreciate the Silver Judge's emphasis on gold and silver. Well, somebody's got to practice the usury. <laughs> Anyway. Historical back jokes. To back to the point. Back to the point. Yes. Uh, what anyway, was the point? So she uh, helps lead you out, and you can go to whatever hideout is most convenient. Probably a mama's in around the corner. Mama's in. Let's go. And uh, start planning. <laughs> uh, start your planning session. Starting now. Okay, how the heck do we do this? Well, you when you track them down, and I think that's it. Well, and then get get them. So I think yeah, I think that's the what, not the how. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, we definitely. There. I think probably, uh, probably the, the yeah the the two biggest high uh, biggest priorities is a, you know, kind of trying to you know, anticipate this guy's, uh, this guy's moves and, you know, how to stop it. So I, I definitely think we, we need to figure out how to, well, probably figure out as much as we can about this crazy ritual. There are Uh, apparently three other incidents. We could go and look at them. Yes. Or we could just steal the guards notes about them. Uh, what'd you say? Or we could just try and get what, whatever notes and and, and, and uh, stuff the guards already co- collected about them. Well, yeah. But... Well, they're probably not just going to hand it over to us. What? And why would... <laughs> what <are> you... <laughs> this is where Sonny goes, yeah, Hello, thief! thief. <laughs> you know, it's just about to point out. It's my job to take things. I know it's your job to take things, but uh, I, I'm doubting your average currently. <laughs> <laughs> You 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 you, t- you tend to leave a paper trail as it as it were. Mm. So if we are going to steal this, we need to be a little smarter about it than we normally are. Um, I also I also want to remind you you have in terms of experience to spend one general XP, three family XP, and you also have two recurring characters to fall back on in uh, Elena the vet and Linus the master thief. Okay. Huh. Don't know how. Don't know how much the vet could help us, but if we have she a master, well, there's always a horse tranquilizer. No. <laughs> <laughs> we still have that, I think. Maybe no, I don't. I, I think it, we lost that. I think we lost it some time ago. No, we no, we just never used it. Was you, the problem? Well, we, we did use it. I think didn't we? No, no you, you I, lost. I don't it. think we no. lost it. I think she might have taken it back. Yeah. Possibly, um, uh, uh, on uh, but on a more serious note, having having a having a master thief uh, help us, you know, obtain the the you know the the CSI records, uh, as it were, or what happened might be helpful. Um, I think I'll also definitely have to hit the books and you know see if I can find any any uh, any record because I'm I'm sure this is something documented albeit obscure because no no idiot just just thinks like i'm gonna do this and they just just wing it Mm. 
So, uh, when she was talking, she said that there was four incidents and four deaths, but, uh, like, implying that there were more people that didn't die, exactly. Mm. So... Uh -huh. Good point. Maybe maybe we could find maybe some someone... eyewitness account things. Yes. Potion. Magic man. Yes. <laughs> Magic man. Yes. Does this, when you looked at the ritual ruins and all that, do you need certain components to actually do those sorts of ruins, or does it? Can anything just work? Um. Pause. Like with. The... Pause the thing for a second yeah. here. Um, Beep boop. Let's see. I'm going to say yes. It requires some specific components for uh, marking and some incenses. Like, the sorcery, the sor the sorcery is uh, not really like a hard science. It's mostly like, you know, voodoo sort of. If you do these things, then it usually works. And so there's sort of general knowledge that, you know, if you're going to do ritual, you need these things. You don't know exactly what they do, but they seem to help. <laughs> you know, use the markings with this kind of chalk, you know, make sure you've got some candles that have this sort of incense to them. Make sure you don't expose this part to fire. Yeah. The paranoid hmm. sorcerer that, that just buys a thousand candles. In his, so just to make sure. Yeah. Mm. So that's yeah, where all it's... those damn candles from Dead Space came from. <laughs> yeah, it's... I, I imagine that sorcery is a lot like, I don't know, IT, in the sense that sometimes you just have a bunch of practices and solutions that are just like, do this, and maybe it works, and I don't know why. <laughs> I've got uh, this picture in my head. Of, of, on again. But like the whole <laughs> field. <laughs> I I got this image in my head of 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 poor Lazarus being the head of an IT department, just being this, just incredibly disgruntled. <laughs> and I I actually actually have problems picturing this idea because normally when something doesn't work in IT, it's pretty obvious why it doesn't work if you know what you're doing. Ma ma magical IT department. I'm pretty sure that actually I'm pretty sure that actually exists in fiction somewhere. Mm. Why is this ritual cause my legs to fall off? <laughs> There's just a, a number on the side of the ritual chalk. Call this for uh, some uh, customer support. <laughs> in, in, ca in case this ri ritual fails, assuming you, assuming uh, you live through it, call this number. And, and send, make sure. send a, a raven to this uh, address. I just, guys, I just picture uh, Edward Elric, the Elric from us, uh, and Trying to pull number without with just one arm and one leg. It's like, can, I think I messed send, this up. Can, can you send over an error report detailing the ritual you were using, what stage of it you were at, and what and how many components you had spent? <laughs> uh, any uh, and uh, what, what what were the results? Did did you gain anything? Did you lose anything? Yeah, we lost something. <laughs> what are the specs? Are there, tentacle monsters? Are, there mo are there tentacle monsters running around eating things? Did you did you have to kill the results of your ritual? Did you try stopping the, the ritual the and starting it again? <laughs> yeah. if you, if yes, you're an idiot. If yes, you're an idiot. You're not supposed to do that. Actually, I think they'd encourage that. You have to buy more supplies every time. You have a point there. At, well, Don't forget to hmm. press the big red button that says "Do not press." <laughs> Well, anyway, anyway, back to planning murder. All right, I mean, right. I'm going to restart the timer at 11 minutes. Okay, that was fine. Yeah. Um, hmm. I'm uh, just thinking if this ritual needs certain supplies, maybe we could find who's we can track. Yeah. Um, Gravedigger's no no alchemists. Probably, maybe we could get a lean on that. Gravediggers have pallbearers who are the closest thing to, you know, full fledged heretical necromancers too. Mm. Yeah, I that, was that... Consider I was considering the All idea right. of finally get, 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 trying to find one of them and asking them advice in order to give us a better idea of just what, because 
I'm assuming you're you understand sorcery, but this is a different breed of it, right? Oh yeah. I was just thinking maybe someone who's in a similar field might have a better idea. Yeah, well, La- Laz misses with mines and everything. This isn't this isn't really his thing, and morally speaking, he wouldn't do it anyway. Mm. Now, 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 cut to our third. Uh, cut to the climax scene where you actually had me trying to do this. I was like, oh god, I hope- <laughs> oblivious. You have to complete the ritual. This is the only way. No, I mean, he had to stop the ritual by by doing it in reverse. Damn it. <laughs> reverse the polarity, oblivious. <laughs> we got to cross no, the you streams need to, to do this. Ritual with a slightly different uh, symbols. Are we still paused, or no? That's don't forget problem. to cross the streams. So, okay, so back on track. We okay, need yeah, to yeah, we need we need people us. to leave. Like we need to find out information of the other rituals, because we're assuming that they're going to be other ritual sacrifices. Of course. There were, as she told us this, well, mm. incident. Yes. We, There's we going to be at least one more. We're going to track down whatever supplies they're using for this ritual, and I'll just try and track it back to him. Mm. I'm going to go and see if I can track down a... Hole there in order to get some like an expert opinion on the uh, necromancy and or trying to at least have someone who has a better idea of just what the hell these rituals are about and just what they're what they might potentially be leading up to. First rule to necromancy, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, anything else? Hmm. Oh, um, uh, quick question. Um, if, uh, uh, if the circle are the only ones, um, ha- have, have other magi, I guess you could call them. I'm, I'm sure there'd probably be some, uh, some, uh, some bit of, some archive they have or anything of the sort. I mean, whatever books that the, the, the circle has are like remnants of Vladich treasures you know, from the fall of the Empire, so they're not exactly going to have a library. Well, yeah, I, did, well, I didn't figure it would be, like, you know, an entire building or anything, but they probably have something we can use. I do not know. For sure. I mean, what are you looking for exactly? A, a building? A book? Or what? Uh, I'm, I'm lo- Basically, I'm going to see if I can track down any uh any any source of of uh any any like concrete com- uh uh a, a a source that confirms like what what exactly we're looking for any you know any oh, any a, way a, a magic bullet to end this uh no, job in no, one not, shot no <laughs> no no like that i mean something that's going to going to give me going to give me any any clues to you know the exact nature of what this is besides what i already know Oh, you mean like in terms of, I mean, this, I don't know if that's like a domain purely the circle might have, but if you want, if you want to track down that sort of resource that, yeah, yeah, I can see that. So, I just, I just, I so just wasn't, fact, just wanted to sure if like the circle exclusively would have that knowledge. Well, okay. The, the reason specifically why I'd say the circle is, is I wouldn't have to break in to, you know, actually acquire that. Far, far, far more likely. I was like, "Hey, can I, can I take a look at this?" Okay, and then be on my way, as, as opposed to, as opposed to finding some some dude who, um, or I mean, maybe it maybe it could lead to some dude who knows more stuff and will have to break in. I don't know. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm, if uh, anyone's I'm, if anyone's going to know anything about you know that sort of thing, it's going to be the church. Shit, <laughs> we're told not to make them mad. So. No. Well, I don't plan on making them mad, but you know, I mean, we're ostensibly we're trying to help them. Yes, but, considering our track record with doing things subtly and without pissing people off, yeah, we probably should. Not do that. <laughs> I'm not gonna break in. I'm not gonna break into a church. That that that's what Trend would do. I would not break in. I'd walk in, and then everyone would spot me because I didn't bother sneaking. 
<laughs> okay, his his version of breaking. <laughs> All and, right. Uh, if you as you mentioned, the breaking viola half. All right. Enough bantering. Back to the back to planning. Yeah, Are so we going to gonna do anything about this dredger? Oh yeah, Wait. I almost forgot about that. Um. Are we doing anything with that? Might want to talk to him or her or whoever it is. Him. Okay. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't want to assume. Uh, so, uh, can we yeah. like uh, say who's doing what? Like, yeah, we should do that. So, Sani's gonna obviously be stealing the documents, I assume. No, why was the master? Uh, for the first segment, she's gonna go, just go and meet up with a, with a master thief, with Leon, get some tips, maybe even some help or some better tools. You can just you can just invoke him and bring him into the the legwork scene. Okay, you don't, you don't have to. And then she's just it. gonna call, call him up and have him help her get the whatever the guards actually have on those incidents. Okay. All right. Uh, anybody else accompanying you, or is this like a uh, semi-solo thing? Does anyone come? Anyone want to come? I mean, I can I'm, always come, but I'm stealthy as a brick, so I don't know how much health I would be. Well, we could all no, could be Same. someone stealthy as a brick at the front entrance to distract people. You have a point. Uh, hmm. So, uh, well, there is, uh, the prisoners that track down the, by, uh, the specific items he was using for the ritual. Yes, the supplies, the proper supplies yeah. in order to perform these rituals. We also have to track down the other rituals themselves to get more into, but I think that's the god thing. That is. That's uh, good. Jack Room's gonna have to go and find a pole bearer. In order to get, you know, to ask their expert, get their expert opinion, and I'll 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 tag along so I can actually, you know, a mm. a backup for you know just in case, and you know, practical knowledge. Mm. Be- better to be there in person. Yes, it would also give you an, a better a chance to get a better understanding of just what it is you're dealing with. Yeah. Unless, for to our knowledge, the Vladov Empire is experimenting with necromancy, which, honestly, I, I know, honestly, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past thing. them. I wouldn't, I would, I wouldn't put it past them, but that's not really Lass's thing. Hmm. I'm just, I'm kind of assuming that it happened at some point. Anyway. Well, they pretty much exploded their capital, so that that probably wouldn't even be, be the worst of their the worst of the problems. Uh, right. Saying, I guess, I guess I I can I can lead the charge to talk to the church. Are we sure we want to get the church involved? They kind of already are involved. They kind of no, already let's, are let's because put, this this is a wanted man who's convicted of high heresy. Yeah. So, uh, no, as I, I would personally say, we'll just let Leverus go there, talk to the church, and the rest of us doesn't come because we always screw things up some way or another. Mm. I mean, that, that's that's up to you. If you're gonna go talk to the church, Jack Crum might just come along because nobody actually. Those people in the church, she actually can actually knows like, who you have to talk to and how hey, this, to talk this, to them. this guy, this guy lives in the closet and, and said you would, uh, you'd help us out. <laughs> <laughs> See, and that just leaves a, uh, cool. I guess it leaves a session, uh, a session to lead for Kren, I guess, or or is Viola leading the other one? Viola is leading the clean guard thing. Viola yeah. is getting info on other crimes, the other incidents. Yes. So, uh, so we need something, something for him to do. Oh yeah, uh, tracking tracking down the dredger. That that would be a a good idea, actually. Can I do that? 
Probably. Well, okay, so could try is... to assassinate him and just stop before you pu kill him. <laughs> it's basically the same thing, isn't it? Oh, we are out of time. Sounds good. Okay. Yeah, we were finishing up anyway. Yeah. Yeah. We're... All right. Anyone to want to volunteer to lead their legwork scene first? Hmm. Yeah, well, I can do it. All right. Pitch Where me on how you yeah. Pitch me on how your uh, legwork scene plays out. All right. Well, I, I'm a Well, to start with, Jack will be using his contacts with the cut with the grave diggers in order to, you know, actually locate someone who actually is a pole bearer. Just, you know, just work out just. You know, instead of just all the people, the various people who just, you know, pretend to be. And then he, but once he's located one who seems like they would know, they'd know a bit, he would arrange a meeting and drag our Russian, our Vladov friend to, to go and speak with them in order to try and show them the information that they've gotten, try and work out just what it is this ritual is trying to do. They have a much better. They have a better understanding of what a necromancer's kind of breed of sorcery would be. All right, and you know his reagents and all that. Yeah. All right. And possibly uh, work out just where this ritual would, where this ritual would need to be held. The final one would have to be held. Oh, we probably need the 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 crime records first to you know, kind of corroborate that. Also, I, I kind of feel like this is the that, that part in the Sherlock Holmes movie where they're kind of like putting on a map, like, hey, this ritual's here and this one's here. I, I, I got a feeling that that's where they, this came from, accidentally or not. <laughs> oh, should, should we let the thief get the records first then? Or? Well, I mean, it's from my understanding, the legwork scenes aren't exactly chronologically done. They, they just, you know... <laughs> Yeah, but yeah. after between legwork scenes, you can you it's abstracted that you can share information. Yeah, that mm. that, that that you you explained it better. <laughs> though they though it does help to do them in an order where you have information you can play in other legwork scenes. Mm. See, uh, I'm going to just assume that we're going to also use the information we've gotten from our thief, but to try and help with that. But we we don't know how it plays out yet. Yeah, I guess we're doing that one first. We're we're, we're volunteering you. <laughs> Yay! Getting volunteered. Such a nice experience. All right. So... It saves me ha saves me having to track uh, this guy down or person down again. Yeah. So, short question: Is actually anyone coming and volunteering to, uh, and being volunteered as a distraction? No, uh, I'm gonna distract him. Well, I'm good at making people. Stop moving too. Uh, well, we we were talking about the the records from the um from the yeah. guards, not not the dredger. That's the other one. It's someone who's gonna go knock on the front door and to and distract what what guards are there in the night. It sounds really fun. Can I please do this? I yeah. promise I won't hurt anybody. Well, I'll, okay, I promise I won't kill anybody. Okay. So with that said, uh, mm -hmm. Viola and Lyona, I think was it. The master thief are gonna wait until Kren starts his distraction at the front door. After which they're gonna take take the high road through from uh, like up the uh, building next door, and then enter through a uh, roof access upper floor window or something. And begin they, they will then begin carefully sneaking around because they're probably not land in the archives at on the first try. Until they actually find the 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 whatever room they keep their the files on the cases, and then just start rummaging through them until they find those on the necromancy incidents. All right, um, Kren, how do you play out your distraction? <clears throat> um, so this is like a police. Uh, I guess, I guess all, it, it, it's, like a, a, it's a city watch station, yeah. City watch. Uh, um, 
they would have their doors just open, right? Since it's they do have a, a lobby of sorts. Although uh, it is it is uh, in the evening now. It is at night, so they're probably like getting ready to close, and you know a little bit more on guard. Uh, all right. Uh, just uh, if assuming the door is open and they're not. Uh, uh, assume not that it locked. is. Yeah, I'll just just uh, walk right in to see how many guards there are and uh, just start causing a really big argument. Uh, I'll just start uh, like walk up to wherever, where, like if I assume there's like a desk or somewhere where you would uh, talk to them. Just start sh- uh, shouting a bunch of nonsense about uh, uh, justice and the and the corrupted crime uh, organize until they organization until they start. Uh, Probably trying to detain me, and which is then I'll just start running around the room. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna say that uh, I'm gonna say go to someone with uh, two advantage dice and two challenge dice because you do this. well, for many reasons, it being you know the police basically. Two D. Mm. The distraction here is the assass- the assassin actor pretending to be a crazy homeless man. Pretending. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's twenty five. Supposed to roll over, yeah, or under. Uh, under. I forgot. Oh, then I succeed. Okay, I was. Okay. One. So that... One boon, two drawbacks. So cancels so out to one, one drawback. Roll. All right, so you exceed at goading guys up front, uh, but the drawback is that on this particular night, the guards, uh, the city watchmen are having none of this tonight, <laughs> and immediately, <laughs> look- immediately actually bring out batons and try to arrest you. <laughs> this guy seems really annoyingly familiar. <laughs> I'm, I like, I'm, I'm not wearing my usual. Uh, costume. No, oh, I know they would. I'm yeah. sure they wouldn't recognize you at a glance. <laughs> but yeah, no. It's like this guy sounds sounds like someone in the reports. We're not taking like, any chances. They, they have I'm they seen. have no patience tonight, and immediately try to detain you. All right. Uh, how many guards are there about in the building? Uh, there are six, just sort of milling about right now, including the guy at the desk. Uh, and there's probably definitely more, uh, further into the building. <laughs> I'd like to. Uh, resist arrest, um, or uh, by just like pushing them away, like non non lethal forms of uh, fighting. Uh, like, what, if you, you like, push them away, just out of their reach. If, if you, if, yeah, try to just keep try to be out of reach and like back off into a corner and be just like, come at a, me, come on. They just pick up a giant, uh, uh, like a like a really tall lamp and use that to keep them at bay or something. <laughs> I'm gonna give you two choices. Uh, use brawl with someone if you actually just want to start punching people, or use run like hell if you want to deal less damage and just try to play a big game of keep away. So I'm going to be punching people? <laughs> I, I would think the run like hell would be more your speed. It, not 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 so much that you're doing damage to them or not, but I thought you're playing a game of chicken with them, not starting a brawl. Uh, I mean, starting a bar brawl with them. Yeah, but I'm better at <laughs> bar, brawling. bar brawling than uh, running, so... And, and somewhere, out like there, ja- somewhere out there Jackram sneezes. <laughs> like, I feel like some well, in my the bar, so uh I by the way I have uh two ad- uh two advantage dice. Yeah. Because uh, the, uh, I think they're minions, yes. A few of them or, are minions. Yeah, these the, the guys out front right now are just minions. All right. So I uh the d8s are advantage dice, yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. That's the success with one advantage. All right, you just that's like three of them, right? Uh, <laughs> no, wait, no, you're not a brawler. You don't get a bonus to... No. So just you, two of them, you sucker punch them, and they groan and, you know, fall, fall to the over. Floor. Yeah, fall over. Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to say... Uh... uh Viola, yeah. 
if I could get you to roll. Uh, actually, with second story work, you can get inside in any location you want. So yeah. Uh, I'm gonna need you to do. Uh, let's see. Three rolls for me. Uh, pick a lock with one advantage because Linus is helping you. Uh, case the joint to search around. Actually, no, sne- uh, sneak around with uh, one and one. Oh, you need a you need a semicolon, not a comma. So that's a success on lock picking. Yep. That no boom. was the second one was uh, the case joint, right? No, it's a sneak around with uh one and one because Linus is helping you, but uh, you know there's the guards back there. So that's success with one challenge. Yes. All right. So drawback is, uh, I'm just gonna say it adds a bit more heat because I can't think of anything particularly suspicious or uh, oh, specific. Just the, yeah. God, in the morning, the guards find this find find all the traces. We were there. Yeah. Basically, you're a little sloppy. So in how, what in, was the third round? Third round? Uh, case the joint to actually... Uh, yeah. To actually any, find the specific like case file you're you're looking for. Any adventures? adventures? Uh, one, because Linus is helping you. And uh, two, because there's a lot of files to get through. <laughs> Ooh. So that's definitely a success. Success, with but with two drawbacks. They, she takes all of the files. Yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna add uh, more heat because uh, you leave a lot of evidence that you just r- rifled through their stuff. Well, yeah, yeah, bring it back. Like the obvious <laughs> things, like so, it's like the obvious things. We have uh, folders in the wrong, wrong drawers. Like and it's just like it's just pro- a mess of papers. Yeah. But I'm gonna say after that you can you can get out uh with Linus just yeah. fine. And he's all like Oh, that was that was a fun little excursion. I yeah. always like rolling I have to agree. rolling guard stations every so often. Oh that by, was all really mean, fun. by all means, uh invite me on another time, though maybe let's hit something a little bigger, a little more difficult next time, huh? <laughs> Will do. Will do. I'm hoping. I've always, I'm I've getting... always wanted to go up against a spider. Ooh. I'm hoping that it gets some form of signal that I can leave now. Maybe not uh, quite yet. <laughs> uh, just roll to run like hell. Oh, yeah. Uh. A so what? Success. <laughs> what the? Uh... What what shenanigans did I miss? Because the first thing I saw pop up was six heat. I was like, oh god, what did he do? <laughs> I didn't do anything. I did not jump for for that was for the beginning of the first time segment. Oh okay, the, okay, the, oh fair the enough. Six and the ten was just Viola not wiping her, probably not wiping her boots, walking through corridors, and not cleaning <laughs> up Even, after her. Yeah, basically, Viola just left all the papers on the ground. Uh, also, uh, the, f- the crew flees questioning or arrest by the city watch. I get to add another four. Hmm. We're starting off strong this session. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. All right. Uh, and that'll do it for that, uh, legwork scene, I think. <laughs> and I didn't actually mention what district this is in, so I'm going to say, you know, I'm not going to p- ding anyone for conspicuousness because you're already pretty loud. <laughs> I, I think the only way we could have made things louder if, is if we set off a cannon and, and uh, committed arson or something. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the only way you could have made it louder is if you actually killed gods. Yeah, that that's the... Hello. Hey, thank you. I didn't do that, so. uh, no, sorry, someone was knocking on my door, but uh, 
yeah uh <laughs> I, i'm amazed that we gathered we garnered that much heat without actually killing somebody <laughs> That's almost impressive in a way. That's, that's kind of what happens when you storm a, a guard station and get sloppy. Storm is such a storm is such a strong word. Let's say mock and infiltrate, break uh, infil- or break uh, and entering. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, we bro- probably it. broke something in the process. Anyway, so like you you now have uh, after some significant effort. Uh, basically incident reports and case files relating to uh, the Grim Spectre, uh, which is a lot of uh, sort of uh, statements and reports about uh, people coming back to life and, you know, the previous three ritualistic deaths uh, and some notes on some notes on those people all saying that they were by all accounts, uh, active members of the church. Oh. I feel like the mm. church would like to know this. Or I assume they probably already do. They, they, they this... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alright, with, I guess with these notes... That, 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 is, that is the connection between these otherwise random commoners that the guardsmen have drawn. To be fair, it's not much of one since... Pretty much everyone is in some way connected to the church. No, but, unless... but these these were like actual contributing Activists. members of of the church community in their respective oh. areas. They okay, also they sure. also all came from uh, a relatively small cluster. They they basically all went to the same cathedral in it for like larger, you know, larger events. They went to their uh. own lo- local, you know. Local parishes and all local that. local parishes for local events, but they they those parishes all sort of feed into the same larger cathedral. Hmm. When Next it's time when it's time for like a like a district wide or you know event, I don't know some major pat priest is speaking or something. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Yes. So please. with these new notes in hand, we're going to go trek down the pole. All right. So uh, I'm just. You can reasonably do that. Um, I'm debating whether I should make you spend influence or not with your cartel to, no. you know, access this sort of person. No, that'd be fair. That would be absolutely fair. All right, then. I'm going to take that I'm influence happy. from you, then. Yum. Good. And uh, you, you track down a rather sort of surprisingly young, slick-haired uh, young man uh, with... Uh, you know, carrying a cane, a book of funeral rites, and a bag of black wax candles. Oh, and you know, hmm. much much like Jackram, sort of wearing a musty smelling outfit of very antiquated fancy clothing. You know, this sort of scraggly robe. Can I? Like a priest robe, but like from, from generations ago. <laughs> well, I picture mo- most of the uh, most of the um, uh, grave diggers are all uh, are all like they they crib their fashion from Bloodborne or something. Yeah, yeah. I actually picture them more like they're putting on the Sunday best of the people they buried just mo- once ago. Oh, oh. Mm. Uh, mm. that's that's, that's disturbing. Maybe, maybe not. I'm... I'm pretty sure that's bad juju. I'm I'm not I'm not you know yeah, an authority on that kind of thing. Not but... literally, just from the aesthetic. Ah, just okay. to just to make this clear, there is actually a spending influence thing where you can get you can basically get clothing or stuff from deceases and to complete a disguise. Like, oh thing, right, get... yeah, there there is. I, I think I think actually the the sort of older st- style of clothing is useful for the grave diggers for their cons, so that they seem more like the relatives that just passed on, for lack of a better, I don't know, mm-hmm. for when they're conning relatives and whatnot. Indeed, fair enough. But yes, we will make it clear just why we're there and why we're seeking his expertise, and. Other respectful, and just make it clear that our three goals here are work out what he needs for this, 
work out where he needs to do it, where the ultimate thing needs to be done, and if possible, let's see, they're all the Oh, yes, if possible, work out just what this thing's meant to actually do. All right. You know, uh, uh, Paul Bearer says... Uh, what's his name, by the way? Uh, what's his name? Give me a name. Gomez. Gomez the Paul Bearer. How about, how about Gideon? Yeah, Gideon works. Yeah, I was I was trying to think. I was like, what, "What's what's a what's a nice uh, kind of antiquated G name I could think of?" That works. So, uh, Gideon, this sort of this sort of pale skinned young man with slick back hair and you know an old fashioned sense, says, "Well, hmm, I've heard of this Grim Specter character. I kind of hoped he wasn't real, but if." You're going after him. Mm. Let's see. Well, yeah. the thing is, for my work, I don't need terribly much. I've, you know, it depends on the rights. And my specialty is seances and, for to a certain extent, animation. But the Grim Spectre does, at least from, you know, the sensational reports I've, I've read. I guess from these these notes that you've taken from the city watch, his thing is more to terrorize than anything else. I, I mean, out, out, of, I, out of curiosity, do, on the on the reports, does it have any of the uh, the signs of the runes and everything that would have been seen, or did they miss that? Uh, they missed that actually. Okay, so I should probably elaborate, and uh, I'll like make a little doodle or something on on the corner of one of the papers. It says, uh, "Yeah, the, this this is actually a key part of uh, the ritual we saw." And he says, "I'm not actually familiar with these sort of astrological elements. This isn't really part of my work. It's it's more to do with uh, you know darkness and flames and." You know that the particular culture's rites that will bring back the deceased. You know, depending on whether they're more Elderland or or you know Dunhaven or Flattish. You know, it, it depends on the on the person. This seems more like just designed to to rip the soul from the other side and just or send it there as fast as possible if they're living. For this. Let's see. It's not a great deal of strong wisdom, but you'd need to prepare a great deal of materials for this. You'd also need to prepare the site beforehand. If you, depending on if you're taking someone by surprise or something, or you know. so they they would have they would have had to put these runes up well in advance. Yes, and if these were hidden. As such, you'd need a very particular kind of material to inscribe upon walls and columns, but without being seen somehow. And they would need to fade into the walls, be invisible until needed. It sounds like you have an idea of what we're, what we're looking for here. Yes. I can point you in the direction of that particular kind of, uh, of... It's a very particular mixture, actually. Not very many people in the city have or need it. Hmm. Actually... I'm... Based on that, if he needs those materials, then he needs to stockpile a lot of them. Hmm. He may be hiding in the canals. Uh, what makes you say that? I was just thinking, if I was the Grim Spectre and I needed... I needed to get to, to be in these districts in order to gather certain materials... <sighs> hmm. 
And then all in the area of this cathedral. Hmm. I needed to hide and also... He may be... hiding in the canals leading around and under this particular cathedral. Yeah. If you could find a spot down there that was sort of abandoned and... I don't know, it's just conjecture and theory on my part. Um, I can point you towards the people who would have this sort of chalk and you can ask them if they have seen this man. I know it's conjecture, but it's definitely a step in the right direction, though. There, there's two people in in that area that uh, I can think of. I'll go, I'll go ask one and uh, get back to you, because this man is a bad thing for my profession as well. Mm. Um, are you able? Is that a curiosity? Would you be able to work, give a hazard a guess as to what this ritual is meant to do and where you, you would need to to be to, fit, to actually commit the last step of it? I'm not. I'm not sure. The that is more to do with the cult, you know, cultist things, and is not really my specialty. Sorry. Probably need to find an astrologian then. Sorry, I can't be of more help there. No, it's fine. It's more than we had to. St it's more than we had to start with. Because I will admit that coming coming to you, I kind of suspected that your knowledge wouldn't be perfect. Because, as I said, it, as you made it clear, your different branches of sorcery doing completely different things. But you're they're similar enough that you probably would have had a better idea. I'm, I'm sorry, I. I'm not in the business of chasing down bounties on New Dunhaven's Most Wanted, but I I do want to be able to help. Thank, thank you very much for your time. Oh, absolutely. I, I must admit, I'm, I'm quite interested to see how this plays out. Hopefully positively. Yes, hopefully. Hopefully. It'd be a nice change of pace. Although if this goes down, we might have a significant uptick in business. Mm. Uh, true. True. At any rate, I wish you luck. Thank you very much, Gideon. It's been a pleasure to meet you. No, the same. I look forward to hearing from you soon. Alright, so now um, part ways. Actually, wait, just, can you, before we go, just, could you give us the, you said there were two people who. Yeah, I can, who, I can, could I can put you, I can tell you where to find them. Okay, because I know that you were going to go talk to one, but where would the other one be? He gives you a name and a location. Much appreciated. Alright. So next leg work scene. Let's keep this rolling. Yeah. <sighs> well, now that we actually have some information to bring to the church, I guess it's probably time to go to the church. All right then. We go straight from the pole bearer to the church, because <laughs> Jack, because Jackram's going to be there, because he actually well, knows who to talk to. <laughs> probably take a shower in the interim. Hmm. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> Uh, some taken. Yeah, I, I would take some offense at that. <laughs> uh, so, all right, you head over to the nearest uh parish to where uh where one of the mm -hmm. victims was, and Jackram. Actually, no, you head over to the church that Jackram uh sort of lives and works at. The, the the one that he haunts. Yeah. 
And his mm. connection puts you, I guess, in touch with uh, one of the priests there. Let me just look at something real quick. Yes, Jack Room will basically just be instru instructing our Vleta friend how to, you know, properly talk to. So you're actually the meeting with, uh, as uh, Jack Room will tell you, a uh, legate of the church, which is sort of their uh, operational leadership out in the city. Mm -hmm. You're you're meeting with a a legate of the church, which is the name for, uh. Uh, not just priests, but sort of like actual, I don't want to say bureaucrats, but, you know, the people who actually like are in charge and get stuff done. Uh, administrative? Uh... Yeah. yeah, administrators, yeah. Yeah, because I, I was like, that, that that was, if I remember correctly from what I studied in Rome, that was basically what, what they do there as well. Yeah. So, uh... You are meeting with, uh, yeah, that. Where is. Anyway. Uh, how does this play out? What questions do you have for him? Uh, uh, well, so, actually, I, I had it in my head and it, it, all, it all kind of flittered out. Damn it. Um, of. Uh, because we 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 specifically uh, why, why does my brain have to fail me now of all times? All right, what were you hoping to achieve here? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, specifically, um, well, uh, well, well, considering we have the the new information came to light, that's like, hey, you know, this is actually targeting your people. So, like, we actually have, you know, guys have, you know, a vested interest to help. Um, not, not to mention that, you know, this, the, you know, whole heresy thing. Um, uh, are you here by, by chance, are you trying to get the church to give, to give us their, are you trying to get some goodwill with the church to, well, I mean, that could hurt, get, but if not get support, then at least earn their blessing for us doing this job. I mean, yeah, sure that 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 couldn't hurt. Um, uh, but I I kind of figured that as a fringe benefit. Um, because I was I was I was sit sitting here planning, and then I got I got distracted by a thing happening outside. Um, I think you wanted like information on the astrological implications of the ritual. Right, right. Thank you, but thank you for jarring my brain. Uh, okay, yeah, so we d definitely, um, definitely need, uh, uh, definitely need, uh, access to the, to, you know, astrological, you know, information that they might have, uh, possibly, possibly anything that they might know as far as, because I, I'd imagine that if all the people so far that have, uh, been connected, they'd probably be more familiar with their church members than we would, hmm. you know, any, any, anything at all that we might use to kind of piece together just what in the actual high holy hell is going on yeah and where and where in the and where, where exactly they're planning to unleash hell yeah yeah ho ho hopefully going to prevent that with, with as with as little collateral damages as, as we can although that that first uh that first like work session wasn't uh wasn't a great start <laughs> yes uh, but yeah, I'm 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 assuming that we're also probably going to need to uh, discuss this. Probably not like in the open room, the uh, the open yeah, area yeah, of the you, church. You can you can he'll lead you back to an office for a private conversation. And uh, I'm gonna say you need to convince someone with okay. uh, one advantage die and three challenge dice. I was <sighs> going to is the advantage die because I'm pretty sure Jack Green has instructed our friend in how to properly talk to the legate. Yeah, so you're helping respectful. him in a number of ways to, you know, appear properly deferential and all that. You know, properly right. respectful. Okay, so it's uh 
slash roll one d hundred colon uh one d uh eight e five then three d ten e five three d ten not e w five I think I messed up one of those. Yeah, you forgot the other colon. I yeah, I forgot the other semi. Okay, my bad. I'll. Hmm. I'm gonna keep that first roll, even though it's a failure. Okay. So just roll the uh, the bonus dice. Uh, see, uh, uh, so the three d ten, all that stuff. And if you want to push your luck once, you'll. I want you to roll four d ten. Say sh- sure, I'll do that. So that's and, three and challenge the, and the one advantage. Oh right, uh, which one's that one again? It's a one d eight. One d eight. Yeah, it's it's been a while. <laughs> Damn it! All right. So three drawbacks, but you do succeed because you push your luck. So he will. Jeffrey's just get his hand, hit his hands as his battle sky just battle fan just blundered through this conversation. So just to explain why you had so many challenges on that. Okay. Well, I would imagine the climate of the uh, the climate of the church right now is not exact. They're not in high spirits. I'd imagine. Not only that, but. Uh, you, uh, you know, he seems to know that you're part, you know, doing this as, uh, on behalf of the of the leverage broker, and uh, also because you kind of come across as slightly heretical yourself. <laughs> with Fair your, enough. With your uh, talisman and rings and staff. All, some, 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 some of which reasonably hidden, of course, but you still kind of carry that air about you. Yeah, I, I, I guess for someone informed, it's kind of hard to hide. Yeah. And, and I legates, tried, legates but... of the church are, are very informed. They're kind of the masterminds of the uh, of the church. As they should be, I'd imagine. At any rate, uh, he does begrudgingly... Uh, offer some information uh the the church does collect information on the heretics uh, to better track them though accessing such information is forbidden and carries you know penalties for just sharing it out willy-nilly uh and you know bring suspicion as well i mean these are somewhat mitigating circumstances yeah. Um that said he does he does want to see this particular uh heretic brought to justice and especially once you tell him that uh that uh, he seems to be charged targeting church specifically and working with the cult of a thousand eyes uh does uh cooperate eventually. And he says, this particular symbolism if it if it's the sort of sort of stars they're tracking the the religious sim- the heretic symbolism they're tracking probably means that especially if if one of their rituals up to this point has failed. They they need a mass sacrifice for the final, the final ritual, not just one but many people. Chances are your your person will be targeting a large group. Hmm. How oh oh, oh talk- crap! A light bulb just went off in my head. Um, how large okay. are we talking here? Like dozens, hundreds, thousands? How big are dozens talking? at least. Hmm. Um. Question. Yeah. Uh, ac- according according to the information I have, or that I've been able to pick up from uh, 
from these runes and uh, all the other stuff we have, it's supposed to culminate in about two days. Yeah. And he's targeting members of the church, it seems. Mm -hmm. Is there any kind of event that's going on uh, very soon that involves many church-going folks? Uh, the like sort of blinks and says, uh, yes, up at the up at the cathedral, there'll be a, a mascot. Oh. Oh, dear. <laughs> what well, off does the oh, fuck thing again. Mm. He, he sort of glares at you as if he understood. <laughs> Um, I, 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 I think I think that's a perfectly I think that's a perfectly reasonable reaction. Oh, it is. He just doesn't like you. Uh, uh, no, I gathered that much. <laughs> but yes, out of curiosity, just what kind of gathering is this? Uh, it's just a mass congregation. Uh. <sighs> There is a uh, there's a member of our church who is uh, running for to be running to be a senator, and so he is speaking there. Mm. And he has mm. invited all the members of the nearby parishes to attend. Yeah, that sounds like a tempting target. Oh boy. <sighs> well, thank you for bringing this to our attention. Rest assured that uh, we'll be ready for him. Well, let's let's hope it doesn't come to that. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. From, from what I can just unfortunately we can we cannot overplay our hand because this is a rather important event politically if you catch my drift mm. oh, we cannot, yes, we cannot go about causing a panic if at all possible oh I get that I'm just even if there is some mythical calamity on the line I'm just thinking if because yes, we know that our Grim Spectre is clearly our prime suspect here, but considering that he appears to be working with the Coals of a Thousand Eyes, and there's been, a, or in the sense of it, there's been at least one other, one other sorcerer who has been a part of, the, of creating these sacrifices. Is it possible that when the time comes, it won't just be this one guy. The Cult of a Thousand Eyes gets their name from the claim that every crowd in the city, there are a thousand eyes of the cults watching. But official mm. reports state that there's generally mo no more than a dozen uh, members at a time in the entire city. Mm. They They claim to be bigger than they actually are. And the likelihood that they have an agent in our ranks in the church who can pull off something like this is minuscule. I know, I know. Guess, guess I was just might not want to this. might not want to leave uh, any stone unturned for this. Because mm. worst case scenario, worst case scenario, the guy either hires hires friend and muscle, or he. Well, he's a necromancer. He just raises some pe some friends. <laughs> anyway, anyway, just I am just thinking worst case here. Well, we will do what we can. That's all anyone can ask. Thank you for your time. Like it. Hmm. Kind of glares at uh, Lazarus for a while longer and says, "You're dismissed." 
Jack Room will offer the Legus a, a respectful bow before as he leaves. I'm going to say because you provided so much uh, information and made the connection, uh, I'm going to cancel out the other couple of the drawbacks and only add like two heat to the pool for that. Hmm. So we're at six. Although maybe just to, though maybe just to try and improve the situation a bit better on the way out, check I'm just smack, smack our Negus friend over the back of the head for being an idiot. Might make him. Might make him think better of us. I don't think that would help. But I mean, he doesn't like it. I'm sure seeing the guy in pain probably, probably isn't. Uh, that's, not so really, it's more uh, like, that's not really like the issue here. <laughs> so it's more about Jack Room feeling better about himself than actually helping with anything. Well, that was an attempt. It was an attempt. So that's uh, that's the end of that legwork scene, which I believe just leaves Kren's lead. Yeah, fr- frankly, we're just lucky I didn't burst into flames in that seat. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I was supposed to. Who was I supposed to locate? Uh, the or... Dredger. The Dredger. No, Dredger. Yeah, yeah. That that. Person he was looking be looking for. If you wanted to make a quick uh change of plans, you could like share information and send them after the other guy. Uh, other guy? The, uh, d- oh, the, uh, the... that uh, Strong Copper found out about? Good point, yes, actually. That that could probably speed things along because we don't have a whole lot of time. I, I'll, I guess that will be it then. Alright. I'll, I'll go find that supplier. Alright, with that information, uh... I want you to roll uh, locate someone with uh, with two advantage dice. I'll Is anyone going with him? Is anyone going with him? Does anyone want to? Hello. You know what, Jacker will come because he was there when the lo- with the nurse. Was I given. mean, the vet. No, not the vet. No, no, no. Okay. Um... Oh yeah, but when last time I went to go locate someone, it was. With oblivious, I think. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, one advantage, and I gonna. I do. You need to push your luck three times to make that work. Ouch. Uh, let's let's go. Which means rolling three challenge dice. And e five. No whammies. That's all a lot of whammies. All whammies. Oh, whammies. Ow. <laughs> Right, so you, have, you had a boon, which uh, cancels out one of them, but you have two. Uh, oh god, I've got a good one. Just, sorry, remind me, Kren, which, you're the, are you the thief or the assassin? Trying to I am the remind. assassin. I'm trying to remind, which one also had the blooded story thing? It was the Story conflicts. Who also had the blooded as a thing? I don't have any blooded things. Yeah, I mean story conflict. What was your story conflict exactly? I have I have an uh, obligation to go. Uh, I get called down to the uh, theater I work at. He's a performer professionally, and he's an obligation. Hmm. Well, I was just thinking. Uh, oh, I was just thinking that that would be a good time to bring my story conflict into it, and considering that we've got two challenge things, guess who we run into? Uh, what okay. is your story conflict again? Remind me. Um, it was the bloodied capo who wanted revenge, who we basically disgraced horrifically when it when we stole the ship. Hmm. Just not saying we're running into him. I'm just saying that. Um, I'm actually gonna pass on that. What I'm actually gonna say is, uh, you do locate the guy because that's what the role was about. But when he spots you approaching, uh, because you are rather unsubtle, uh, he starts running like hell. He gathers up all his his you know his materials at the stall, just <coughs> scoops them into his arms, and starts running. 
Uh, I like it when they run. And then running after him. Yep. So run like run, hell. Run like hell. All right. Heck. No yeah, advantage. I'm gonna have yeah. Um, I'm going to say an advantage. Uh, two advantage. One, because uh, Jackram's kind of helping you out. Two, because he's carrying, uh, trying to keep hold on to his materials and is kind of... God having, damn it. Not having a good time. Um, wow. Oh, you're going to no. need to push your luck three times again. Uh, you're oh, having no, a things are horrible... No. You're having a horrible... Your, your luck either. is just draining away today. Oh, no. Unless you, unless you don't want to sacrifice it and just uh, let that fail. No, I'm, I'm, I'm committed now. I'm too committed. There's no going back. I'm trying to help you, but you just keep oh, failing. No whammies. <laughs> Zero no whammies. whammies. <laughs> Silver Judge be praised. All right, so success with one boon. Uh, so you catch him, tackle him to the ground. Uh, and as a bonus, the materials that go flying includes uh, the the sort of disappearing chalk that uh, was described to Jackram. Um, where are we currently? Where where, where are you're you? in? You're in a you're in a back alley in a merchant district. All right, so uh, mostly secluded. Mostly secluded. All right, I uh, like to grab him, uh, lift him up off the ground. Uh, just holding him by the scruff of uh, his uh, shirt, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, I like motion to Jackram to pick up all his things for him. Okay. Uh, hi. Oh. Uh, uh, why? Uh, why were you running there, huh? Just, I was freaking know your mummers, you brightly colored pieces of. Uh, P- pieces well, of pop. <laughs> uh, uh, good news for you. Uh, I don't intend on killing you today. Oh, good. But... That's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think Jackram's going to take this time to try and get him to talk a bit more by use, basically he's going to intimidate, use an intimidate role to basically just punch the wall next to his head. But just silently, completely silently, just Make roll the, roll to intimidate someone down. with a one advantage die. Damn right. Take <laughs> one oh. e five. Yep. There you go. That that that'll do it. <laughs> you you punch the wall with like surprising force that it actually like shakes dust off the wall off the bricks. And he, his eyes just widen to their maximum. He's just like, okay, okay, I'll tell you whatever you want. Just anything. Whatever. Just just what do you want? I don't want to be the wall. So, <laughs> <laughs> so a- apparently a little birdie told us that you've been selling uh, some form of chalk for uh, rituals. Disappearing and, chalk. And, and, and other stuff. Yes, that's kind of what I, 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 I do. Black market things like that. Oh, You've been selling uh, it on mass to someone. Oh, who... well, you're you're talking about that creepy freaking guy who lives in the canals. The guy who's been in the papers. That's, I'll I'll tell you good. I'll tell I, I I followed him one time. I think I know where he is. Ah. Uh, but it's like yeah. I I it's really really freaking creepy down there. <laughs> Don't worry. Anything that uh, is down there is probably a lot less scary than me and him. I, I might believe it, actually. I might, like, I might actually believe that. I I'll, have my full, like, I'm talking to him with my mask on. Yeah, yeah, I, I can <laughs> I can imagine that. <laughs> yeah, you are, you are actually quite frightening. All brightly colored and masked. So holding like it up just, by the scruff of his collar. I'd like to drop him down and, uh, and uh, just like dust off my hands. Uh, so, to the canals. Uh, I can give you directions. Hmm. Uh, I look at Jackram. Is, 
Uh, do you have any? Do you, are you okay with just directions? He'll not. He will not it silently, but he'll be. He'll just crack his knuckles, just in a threatening manner, just to make sure they're damn good directions. Uh, I'll tell. Uh, uh, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm no no tricks, no nothing. I swear. Oh, don't worry. We we don't expect you to uh, want to lie at this point. Uh, so I'd like. To, uh, I don't know if he has a map or anything, or yeah, but I like. I'd like the directions. Yeah, he'll he'll actually just draw them out for you in like very grand detail. Actually, he's got a knack for this. He is being as thorough as he possibly can. And he's talking to uh, you the entire time. I was like, okay, you go you go down these steps, okay, and and there's some there's usually some guards there, but not at like these times. And then you go take a you take a left, you go down about like, you know, about sixty paces, and then there's there's a little <laughs> cavern on the left, okay. I swear. And it's and it's like there's like this this you'll see it by like this really sickly green glow. It's like really creepy. Uh, I'd like to thank him for his time, give him a little bow, uh, and uh, he, say here have a souvenir and just throw him a feather as I walk off. He kind of looks up at Chakram and he's like, "Is he always like that?" <laughs> yeah. Chakram. Won't say anything, he'll just turn and leave. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Hmm. Alright. So, that is the night segment done. And it is... We are coming up on the beginning of the next day segment. And, uh... A little bit of heat goes on the stack. So we're at 20. And, uh... You now have a location to investigate, uh, and you also have an idea of what his target might be. To his home, and just do him in? So the question is, do you want to do, do you want to jump straight into that drama scene, or do you want to spend a, this day doing a planning scene first? Because you've only gone through one time segment. Uh, it might be worth... Hmm. Well... Do we want to hit hard and fast while the information's still relevant, or do we want to actually scout ahead first? Uh, yeah, I I probably would rather going in as fast as yeah possible before before they actually start like setting things yeah. up before they get too far with it. Yeah. But as we keep the tradition of finishing the jobs early. <laughs> All right, so it, we're coming up on the two-hour mark, so I'm going to say that we shall take a, about a five-minute break. And then when we come back, we will resume, or possibly finish, part two of the uh, Most Wanted job. <laughs>